fans of the extended range guitar, otherwise known as the bass. Not quite as extended as some of you might like, because this is a four string bass. Therefore, a reduced range bass, extended range guitar. Yeah, the premise of what I started with is stupid. Hey, so here's what happened. I went to Musikpark Leipzig, which is a new trade show, and I ran into uh, some friends of mine, uh, namely the people from uh, Musik Meier. And we talked about, hey, what new guitars can I show? And we talked about the Mariposa and other stuff and uh, things, uh, plans of my relationship with them for the coming year and stuff. And we talked about affiliate money, which is good, which means if you use my link, which you please use them, uh, I have Sweetwater links now. Sweetl Sweetwater. I have Sweetwater links. <laughs> And Toman links use whatever apply to you uh, if you do and then whatever you buy you don't have to buy that product I actually get a commission, which is great. So please use them um, Even if you buy something else use my link and then buy something else but uh, Chris was like hey Stingrays always sell well Maybe that means I need to make a stingray video so um I would like to tell you this is a paid for video, but as of yet, I actually don't know because we don't have an agreement on that. So I'm just making it and let's see what happens. Let's see if I can get some money from those nice people from the distributor. So he uh, ran to the car at the trade show, grabbed the beautiful case that this comes in. It was in it and said, and said take it home, make a video. Now I'm home. I'm making a video. Um, and this is actually a pretty cool one. I've had a Stingray copy from, uh, what's the brand again? Fame, from Music Man, for a while. It was impossible to play live because it was ridiculously heavy. I, I tried it uh, in a rehearsal once and uh, it literally broke my back. Luckily, I had my Magnus bass in the car and I could trade. Um, but this is absolutely fine. Now, this is uh, the Stingray reworked from Music Man. What they reworked and what's better, I can't tell you, but I can tell you some specs. This is a four string. Now, something that a lot of companies now do is uh, roasted maple. And the guitars kind of started it. And now look at it. Roasted maple. Now, what's the benefit of roasted maple? And I might be completely wrong about that because I don't know things. But one of the benefits is it becomes more stable in different climates. So when you have a well done roasted maple neck, it should keep uh, its shape and therefore the tuning much more stable. Uh, like on the Ibanez AZ, which is roasted maple, but then also s -Tech treatment where they, I don't know, freeze it or something. Uh, it's pretty much impossible to get that guitar out of tune by moving it through different climates. So this should be a much more stable uh, material, but also it looks damn cool. <laughs> I mean, I would always go for a roasted maple before I go for a maple neck. Um, and as we're looking at the back, look at this sparkle. We're going to go to the favorite cam here and show this color. Because I'm not a sparkle kind of guy. But if I had a choice, yeah, I would get this one in the gray sparkle. It's called charcoal sparkle before I would get it in the traditional sunburst. And of course they have tons of different colors. But for me, this is actually kind of cool. With the black and the roasted maple, it, it works as a whole. Um, what else do we have? Well, of course, all the Music Man typical stuff, like the uh, truss rod adjustment with the spoke wheel right here. There you can see it, which is obviously a lot easier just to stick something in there and wiggle it. You literally go click, boink, adjust the truss rod instead of opening like something up here and uh, getting a stupid wrench in there, which you then can't turn because the strings are in the way. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but the other benefit of the truss rod adjustment here is that this part stays more solid because you're not hollowing it out. There's usually a big ass hole here, which makes this part of the neck much more prone to breakage, um, which is why here we don't need a volute. It's always nicer to have one, but it's not 100% necessary. Obviously, we got the 3 1 tuner distribution. Um, the uh, strings are as straight as they can possibly be on a headstock. 
there's a string tree right here. These tuners bonk. I just bonked it. I just bought this. Um, the tuners are. It says Music Man. They look hip shoddy, but I think they might be doing their own now. We have a five point thing here. Really nice uh, contoured neck heel transition thing. Uh, do you really need this on the bass? Are you gonna fiddle up here? Well, if you do, please don't play bass. Um, we have two, uh, two battery compartments here. So it needs quite a bit of power, 18 volts. Um, there is a aluminum, very, very thin cavity cover, but it is not recessed. What can you do? I mean, that's five more minutes on the CNC, and we can't possibly do that. I don't know. We still don't know why they're doing that. Um, what else? A uh, pretty traditional bridge, for Music Man at least, right there. So we have four knobs, all of them was. It's like wah wah, wah wah, wah wah, wah wah. No, they're not. Michiel asked me to say that. <laughs> I was forced. Um, it's a, an 18 volt three band EQ. I'm gonna assume this is bass. There's a mid notch, so it's easy to find the neutral, posi neutral position. There, there, and that's volume. Um, two humbuckers on this one. Um, we have plastic dot inlays, if you ask me. I mean, I know it's traditional for this thing to have this. If you ask me, get rid of them, make it super streamlined looking without anything, or make them charcoal sparkle. I don't know, it's, they don't bother me, but I think you, they could be cooler. But they're huge ass dots. Um, we of course have beautiful dots on the side, and they are pretty damn centered. The fretboard looks great. The whole craftsmanship on this instrument is of course very good. And you can see that the lacquer starts up here, and this is natural maple. What else, what else, what else? Um, looks like someone snorted on this. Let me get rid of that. <laughs> and obviously we are bonked it on the wooden table. That wooden table isn't gonna scratch that, uh, that finish. This is very solid craftsmanship. Um, it is slightly rounded off here. Let's see if we can capture that in the camera, Leslie. So you see, there's a little bit of a roundation. Of course, a little bit of a belly calf. It's a very ergonomic piece of bass. And you probably already saw it. We have a five-way blade switch here, which is very uncommon for bass. Usually in bass, you have a blend knob between the two pickups. Um, so you can say whether you want more in the front, more in the back with a blend knob, which in this case would have required a fifth knob uh, or fifth pot. And then you have a switch usually for a little switch for a single coil humbucker, um, if you want to offer that. That's the way that my Sandburg does it, for example. Um, and I have to say, as a guitar player, I do like the blade idea. It's uncommon, and it's in a position where you don't flick it while you play. It's actually going this way a little bit. As you can see, uh, do we have any camera that can show that? Yeah, there, guitar one. <laughs> That's guitar too, but okay, fine then. Ah, ah. <laughs> so you can see, it's not something you can flick like this because it's actually going in the opposite. But a, gu a guitar player, <laughs> a bass player wouldn't. And realistically, and that's just me, who is a guitar player playing bass, I usually have it on both all the time. I can't tell you how many times I've only had the front or the, uh, the, the neck or the bridge pickup because I probably have never done that. I always have a mix 50-50. So yeah, here you can't freely blend as you want, but you can be on this, you can be on this, you can have both of them, which is where I would go, and then in the in-between positions, single call here and single call there. I assume, because I couldn't find this space on the website. So what I did find on the website, I can read to you which is on the Tomon website, where I found this exact base, for $23.99. Um, we're gonna get into pricing at the end of the video. So it's got an uh, ash body, five something, a uh, fretboard, a five piece thing, 
Um, ebony fretboard, 22 frets, which are pretty damn flat, that's cool. Uh, graphite saddle, which is compensated. So uh, Music Man always does that to give each string a little bit of a different scale uh, for something, tuning. Let's see if we can actually capture that. I don't know if you can see that. They're slotted slightly differently in different lengths. That's pretty damn cool. Um, we have uh, 41.3 millimeters here. We have a 34 inch scale. We have an 11 inch radius. No clue what that means. Uh, Music Man Neodymium Hamburgers, Active 3 band. This is aluminum or aluminium. And this is aluminum or aluminium, which is kind of cool. This is a standard plastic pickguard, uh, but this is, a, is actually metal. Metal! See? Which is kind of cool. And it works beautiful with all the black. So, by now you're going to say... Well, he's talked a lot. Well, that is true. And you've probably been to this channel for the first time because you're a bass player and uh, none of my other over 2,000 videos interest you. Um, the case that it comes in is amazing. All the Music Man cases are extremely good. And that is something you have to consider when buying this, that you're getting a really good molded hard case with it that will absolutely protect your investment. Um, so we're going to start. We're going to do a couple of things. We're going to start in the middle with the EQ, and I'm going right now through the Starlifter preamp by Nordstrand, um, which I'll also review, so let's see if you just hit, there you go, there's the Starlifter preamp, um, this volume doesn't do anything when I'm going uh, XLR, uh, Kerry Nordstrand is an amazing bass builder, uh, makes killer pickups, and this is his preamp right now, so I'm going to turn the EQ off, so whatever you see here has no bearing whatsoever, actually right now, Nothing does anything. So if I'm playing here... No major difference, but I'm going through that. Um, and uh, let's check out some sounds completely DI. And then we're gonna kick in the Starlifter uh, EQ a bit. And then also we're gonna go into a Universal Audio Ampeg uh, emulation, which is very cool and gives us some grit. So, I don't know how to do a bass demo, but we'll, we'll find out. And single coil positions, which is right here in the in-between. A little bit more hiss and bizzle. single call here.
playability is beautiful. I love the neck shape. Nothing is getting in my way. All I'm thinking about is let's make some music, which is exactly how you want your instrument to be. Um, I love the balance. Um, the one thing I'm not super happy about is the uh, volume pot is pretty uh, tough. It's not easy to just go roll your volume back, which on guitar I want quite a bit. On bass, I might want quite a bit as well, uh, just to make sure I'm quiet. Yeah, on stage, if you look at the star lifter, I can easily hit mute. Bam, it actually turns red and you're good. Uh, and now, you know, no sound. And usually bass players have a mute button. Uh, but, no, I this should be easier. I really feel like I really have to dig in and double check to make sure it's down. This should be an easier pot to control. Whereas the others, the others are actually a little bit softer and quicker, but those should be kind of stuck in position because it's an EQ. I would be totally fine if they're a little bit harder to move. So let's look at those. <laughs> That's a massive EQ boost there. Up to the point of distortion. Mids. That's a beautiful frequency, actually. It's not muddy. It's just to get it a little bit more. Beautiful. And then we have the highs. That's all of them. Nice. So I don't know what a slap bass sound should be, but I would go, well, a little bit of bass, a little bit of highs. Oh, massive! And I don't know where I should be here. that that's nice oh single got right here is fun f u n I'm driving a little bit hard here holy crap That is a way cool sound I 
actually don't know what I would go for. <laughs> if I'm playing rocky kind of stuff, or rocky kind of bass, I would go for that. Let's see with the pick. There's so much stuff you have to cover on a bass review. It's ridiculous. I've got it pushed here. Let's go a little bit more. See, that's the difference of that preamp. That's ridiculous. There's no active passive here. Nope. It's always active. Let's engage the star lifter. EQ. So that's the modern side. I uh, know that's the vintage side. If I go to modern, much more not harsh, but kind of scooped. And it's driving a bit. Okay, we're gonna go around the star lifter and I'm gonna engage a preset now that I have for the MPEG, which yes, in that camera, we can actually see the MPEG right there. I'm gonna center everything here. It's actually a really nice DI kind of simulated MPEG thing. Which of course changes the sound drastically. I'm playing guitar now. I shouldn't. That's actually kind of cool back here. Single call, quite a bit more buzz, but I mean, that's it's a single call. I don't know what I'm doing because that's that's not playing bass, playing bass is. have all that stringy, clicky definition. Let's, let's say we have enough sounds here. Hoorah! Um, that blade thing, for me, makes a huge difference. Why? Well, realistically, when I have my blend knob, I'll stay in the middle. 
because who wants to fiddle with that? I know you bass players might, but me? Nah! But having this um, switch actually makes me consider different sounds more than the blend knob does. Having the switch for single coil, usually mine stays where it is. Having that five-way blend thing, uh, five-way switch thing makes me just try the sound a little bit faster, a little bit just like, oh, why not? Why not just go, oh, wait, oh, no, that's cool. Um, so I think it visualizes your creative options a little bit more than a blend knob and a switch does. Just that, just for me, that's how my mind works. Your mind is probably very different. Um, now, what is this thing good for? Let, let's go with what is it not good for? It's not good for playing a five string bass because it's a four string. <laughs> um, this is absolutely the rock thing. This is absolutely the funk thing. This is absolutely the modern metal thing because you can get those sounds, especially with the two humbuckers. Um, this is definitely your blues machine. Uh, what style of music have we not seen a Stingray in? None. <laughs> this is as universally approved in the bass world as a... Uh, um, uh, as, a, as a jazz and a P bass, you just see them. Uh, whereas the jazz and the P bass, and this is the difference for me as a producer, have a little bit of honk at maybe 1 to 1.3 kilohertz. This pushes a bit more in the 600 hertz range. So for me as a, as a mix engineer, when I know that a uh, Stingray has been used, I push a little bit more in the 650 hertz range, whereas with a, a jazz bass, I push more in the 1.5k range to get the gnarly sounds out. Um, this is a great instrument. It is flawlessly built with amazing components. Now, price, can you get cheaper basses? Yes. I already said the case is really good. In the case of the case, it is good. Oh, that was lame. Um, it's a great tool. In the US, we don't have to talk about price. It's... Great. In Germany, we have more stages in between the manufacturer. And yes, that does add. But rightfully so, because those people are doing their jobs. So 2400 is, I would even say, mid-priced for base. Because we know for base, <laughs> look at Fodera, 15,000. Um, and not 15,000 as a piece of art like a Ritter guitar. No, those are usable bases that people buy because they're great but at 15,000. So we are in the mid price when it comes to basses, I think. This is all made in the US. This is made in San Luis Obispo, which is an expensive place to live. And Music Man treats their employees, as far as I know, extremely well. There's health insurance, there's benefits, there's vacation days, there's all that stuff, which costs money. And that's money you put in here. Now you could say, I don't give a shit about those people's well-being and I want a cheaper base. Well, you know what? That would make you an asshole. Um, knowing that there's a company where employees stay is money to spend on. Why? Well, a company where the employees change all the time because the companies are assholes. And I know, I don't know. I don't know. Let's just say without naming anyone, I know a German bass maker, where the people change all the time because they're not happy. That means you have to train people again. That means that the quality will always kind of like, well, trainees making the instruments. That's not the idea. Keep the people as long as possible so they know what the fuck they're doing when they're building a Stingray. And looking at this, that's exactly what happened. It's a great instrument. And I literally can't fault it for only one thing. Um, that's it. Uh, this goes back to them. Uh, charcoal Sparkle, that's the way to go. If you want to save some money, buy it with one humbucker. But I, actually, the sound options are pretty cool, so buy it with two. Stingray, I think, special HHCS, something like this. Link below to Sweetwater, link below to Toman. Please use them, because that helps me. And uh, thanks to Musikmeier for loaning me this. 
as of yet, that's all I know that I'm getting for this. Maybe I get more, who knows? Um, and uh, animals at the end. <laughs>